in the Vale, which is one of my little favorite spots because in, we did a lot. The whole park is designed um, with sound attenuation in mind, and uh, especially with the BQE, there's going to be a gigantic linear hill that goes in all along that side. There's so much in this park that's still to come. Um, uh, but I did sound analysis with a, a sound engineer of the whole park. People that would design concert halls actually did a park design, which I think was the first time they did it. And they created the park, uh, the map of the place in, in computer model. And then um, we would put different elements into the model and it would show the effect on the sound. And one thing I learned was that this would be the quietest part in the whole park because of the way it's contained here from the city and it's just focused out on the water. Um, so you may have noticed as you came down, we have some deciduous conifers here in here. There's uh, Metasequoia, Dawn Redwood, and then they give way to Taxodium down at the low points in the slope um, on either side. And this is, so to kind of give it a little special thing. This was actually known as the Willow Vale, until we found out because of the uh, and but it you know the, we, that's another thing that we did with and, and to start to comp, uh, contrast with the kind of big moves of the hedgerows and whatnot, the kind of unifying elements was to start to then find places to create accents of little groves that had like particular character, right? So this is the deciduous conifer area. Up on the top there um, is um, trees that are really uh, well adapted to the windy exposure of, that's called the prospect up there. We're gonna walk back up there and then walk back down because you guys are hardy and can do that. But up there is Catalpa and Polonia, okay? When I learned the two of them, uh, 25 years ago, I, I said to myself, my God, these trees go, like, I should make a grove out of these. <laughs> and then, 25 years later, I finally got to. Uh, so there they are up there, and uh, and they, they and the idea is, and that's Big Noides, Catalpa Big Noides, which is the lower growing one, and so they're going to kind of create this grove that hunkers down on top of that moment there, and can really take that salt air and winds and uh, wind and exposure and sun from all sides that that point gets, um, the prospect gets. And then um, there was a question about London Plain and what's wrong with you, why did you use that? And um, and that, <clears throat> all the plants uh, went through, you know, all of the sieves that we all use, uh, both emotional and practical, right, to actually come up with the planting design. And, uh, but one of the most important was adaptability to the exposed site, right? And so, Really, that was the first sieve. So, and you'll see a lot of plants here that are found naturally on the waterfront, or found thriving in Battery Park City. Here on the waterfront. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, some of the funnier things that you might not know if they will work. So, we used empirical evidence uh, uh, almost all the time, if not every single time, on every plant choice. You know, how does that do? And then sometimes we used empirical evidence and it, and it still didn't work. Like we lost a couple of southern magnolias at the front, uh, and there are southern magnolias actually growing on the site at the other end, but they, it was just a little too exposed for them. And I think we got a little too enthusiastic when we were actually placing them in the ground and put them in a little bit too exposed to site, and we lost uh, one or two of those. But. Um, but there was a lot of empirical evidence, observation, and then your textbook knowledge about plants and its resist, you know, their, their, uh, how they can withstand airborne salt, uh, wind, exposure, and all of those kinds of things. And then also soil compaction and, and, compaction and whatnot. But, but the so this park is designed to be, the intention um, is full organic maintenance, okay? Like if I, I mentioned James Satillo and, and T. Fleischer, you know, so their whole philosophical approach in terms of creating the right soil to support, and I think that's why the plants look as good as they do, even though they've been here a year, create the right soil um, to really support uh, the, the, the growth of the lawns. Look, look at this lawn, for instance. And, and the trees um, uh, on the microbiological level and on the soil structural level. We were, and and, and uh, John Swallow of Pine and Swallow was a soil scientist. I think seven mixes, seven different, maybe more, 
different mixes of soil in different places that have the slopes and the and the high high use uh, the lawn areas and you know the every every type um, and and so there's it's a coarse sand especially in the lawn areas to, to give us that pore space that we need in the soil and then it's inoculated with compost tea um, and, uh, and so the whole kind of nine yards in terms of of that and then that's ongoing um, you know follow up on that um, but I don't believe we're in, we're not using any pesticides right no no we're not you know the IT was no pesticides and there's none and like no fungicides or anything so this grass is growing based on that yes That's uh, because they, I kind of deal with them. The mosquito, the mosquito union, I, it's costing me a lot, but uh, I'm giving them like extremely long pensions. But um, no, I, 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 that's probably just because of the exposure of the, to the wind, I think, uh, here more than anything. And they don't like sunlight in general, except for those new nasty ones that I've read now. They don't care about sunlight.